Connors T. How are ye? Welcome to the Candlelit Tales podcast, where we tell stories from Irish mythology and folklore and chat about them. We're continuing our series now on mythic waterways with a story that is close to home, or at least close to our home in Cork. This is the story of the River Lee and its source at Gugan Barra. This podcast is brought to you by our supporters at Patreon. You can join them over at patreon.com forward slash candlelit tales or make a one time donation to the PayPal button on our website. Like, share, comment, and above all, enjoy. And for now, Aaron, tell us a story. The mouth of the harbour for the River Lee, you will see a huge expanse of the southern part of Ireland. A big bay opening up to let the water flow into it. If you follow the River Lee, past the flatlands, the once were marshlands of the city now, and follow all the way out to the east, to the Shehi Mountains, you will come to a place called Gugan Barra, the Rock of Barra. And there in the scenic hillsides, you will see where the origin of the River Lee came. On the lake in Gugambara, there is a small island and supported by limestone. This island has a small limestone church and chapel that was once founded by Saint Finbar. Today you may see people hiking, cycling or kayaking in the waters below. There are many beautiful scenic sights with the great cliffs straight down into the water as the river begins to flow around that great lake that gives the water so much force later on in its flow. You may also see a very scenic thatched roof toilet next to the car park by Gugambara. Needless to say, this was not always there. And what was there was that island. Long, long ago, before the beliefs of Christianity came to this land, before Celtic mysticism could really have been a thing, before the traditions were completely stamped out by other beliefs, people came to this island. Before it was even really named, or the name we have it now may not reflect what it was once called by those people who came nonetheless, who left their tracks and traces. Archaeologists still find little bits to remind us of the people a long ago who came to this scenic place. And there a standing stone, a limestone rock on the island surrounded by the water of the lake. The darkness and depths below had eeriness sewn into the water. The feeling there is strong and a sense of both darkness and lightness. The strive for life in amongst desolation and death. The beauty and harmony evoked from simply staring into an abyss of blackness and dark waters. And this waters, they say, held a great serpent, Lua its name, a serpent of darkness that spiralled in thought and pulled down to drown anyone who did not light their fires and celebrate and give their trust and their love to the old gods. Lua was there, waiting patiently, watching those come and those go and waiting to bide its time. For Lua knew they would have so much to do. When the old gods were replaced, a new faith came to the land. A man in Connacht was born. And when he was of age, he went to study with the monks who prayed, and he devoted his life to a lord with one name. 
and he was given the name himself, Fionn Barra, bright-haired, blonde Barra. And he went off to Rome. He took a great trip, an adventure of sorts, to go and become even more holy and connected with this one faith. And when he returned to the island of Ireland, he saw it fraught with fights, darkness, death, all over the land. So much turbulence, so much fear and destruction. This was the time where the Viking raiders were coming over and over again, pillaging and plundering and taking what they would want from the land. So hard to defend against these valiant raiders who brought their narrow boats up the many rivers and waterways of Ireland and took from it the greatest of the golds, ornamented jewels, and livestocks and wealth from the places of abundance, which were more often than not a monastery. Now Fimbar thought he heard the voice of an angel bringing him down to the south, bringing him all the way down to a lake surrounded by cliffs with beautiful trees on the edges and in the centre of that lake sat an island supported and nearly floating and linked with a thin line of land to the mainland an island you can walk to and as his feet went following footsteps that echoed centuries old though he did not know he carried on in his path and came to an old ritual site. The presence there he felt was one of both darkness and light. Dark things had certainly happened here, but in the name of prosperity, and potentially many beautiful things happened here too as he looked around, was besotted by the sights and sounds, the birds calling in the air, the full trees of alder and willow and hazel dripping into the water all around him. And yet, although the sun glistened off the water, he felt a darkness below the surface. And as he stared into the deep, dark depths, he felt sure there was something staring back at him, something otherworldly. But he did not run. He came to a standing stone, the rock on this island, and he placed his hand on it. And he knew, as he knew so well from such a young age, that he would devote his entire life to one purpose. He knew this rock would be the rock he would give his name to. He would replace the old ways with a stronger, newer faith. He would replace the old ways with the new. And so he set out the call for those who would follow him to come to Gugan Barra, the Rock of Barra. And there he would give out his Gospels. And though some call him a saint, Saint Finbar he was, many claim there were darker rituals held on that island for a long time. Practices that might have been seen to be more primitive, more pagan, than the Catholics would like to admit. But whether this is true or not, we do know that Fimbar was a man divided in two. He had his faith, he had his darkness too. And each night he seemed to come to this lake, stare into the dark depths below and ask himself the question, could he let it go? Could the light and the dark exist together, or would one have to be severed like a limb from him? This darkness he knew was below the depths. He lived for many years here, and he had his chapel built there, of limestone, built on the rock he had founded with strong, support, the foundations all stone sinking into the bedrock below on this island surrounded and floating in water. 
And still he was turbulent of mindset. He had snakes coiling in and around his thoughts. Darkness spreading out and serpent's tail lashing in his dreams at night. Then one day when he was giving mass, a sermon he was preaching, he saw the water move much more than before, and suddenly a great wave rose up as a serpent's head came careering out of the water, thrashing its body around till its tail came whipping with a great sound of crashing waves all around. And the chalice that was in his hand was splashed and crashed out on the ground. Then Finbar knew... At this serpent, there was his job to rid. It would be his duty to finally rid the lake of this darkness and this evil and bring about a chance for lightness to begin. And so all night he prayed. He set up with those who were brave enough to chant and call Lua from the depths below. He lit the fires, he danced and prayed, he called for the strength of old and the newness of this faith that he brought with this chalice in his hand, and now he called for Lua to come face him from the depths below. And in the darkness he heard this being, this ferocious voice from the depths, call and thrash and angrily roar. Lua raised its mighty head out of the water, and in staring defiance, he lashed its tail once more and careered now out, away from Fionn Barra, from fair-haired Barra and his congregation. He saw defiance in their eyes and met it by running away. Destruction would be what they had caused, and he ripped its way, Lua tearing through rock and land, letting his monstrous body pour onto the fields below, letting the water roar around him as he savagely ripped through the landscape. He went herring down towards where he knew the water was deeper and wilder and more wonderfully endless in the sea. And as it chased through the hills and went down Towards and around this great bay, it thrashed and kicked and gouged and tore the landscape. It tore the grounds. It tore into the land so the water created marshes everywhere its feet stepped. Its tails crashed against the rock and its mouth bit into the land, spitting it back out until he finally crashed into the water of the sea. And all of the water of the lake poured forth and followed Lua's direction, filling it full, every bit of it, with water. Endless water from the deep, dark depths of the other world, all the way down, through the ground, it flowed and keeps flowing today. As the river Lee got its name from this great creature, Lua, the creature that carved its passage into the landscape, and the water that flowed from Guganbara still flows there today. And in the mouth of the harbour, where Lua had destroyed the landscape with its fury and ripped up rock, the water crashed in around and made a marshlands, a Kirkig. So marshy was the landscape there that after his time, in Guganbara, living a hermit's life and spreading the faith of this one true God and finding ways to look into the waterways and see the darkness, see what can be created from destruction and seeing the ways the wells can be kept in sacred, honouring tradition of going to the place where water meets the air. Down into the depths, they say, the other world has the source of these holy wells. And Finbar found the source of his holy well, an ancient site, with so much prayer already given to it for a different rite of passage, for different names in different tongues, but still the prayers were the same. They were prayers of healing, prayers of peace, prayers for peace of mind. 
And there in Gugambara you can see the holy well St. Finbar has, one of many of the great waterways that are holy wells dotted across the land. But though St. Finbar started the river running from there in Gugambara, he did not live out the end of his days up in the Shia Mountains. St. Finbar followed the water. He followed the river until the mouth he came to. And there he stayed for 17 years, they say, on a tall house built with stilts into the marshy landscape. And this became his cathedral. And this became the place people flocked to and still do today. A city was born around it, built on the marshes of the lands that was ripped apart by Lua. And if you follow the footsteps of St. Fimbar all the way back to Gugan Barra in the Shi Mountains, you will see the rock that's built into the small chapel there of limestone, given its name the Rock of Barra in Gugan Barra, the mouth of the River Lee.